Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new Mauritius compliance stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! First one is titled, Check and Clean the Machines Twice Every Day? Sure thing boss. Warning, potentially triggering information about meat production ahead. I work in a major butchery factory as a repairman. Basically my job entails fixing broken robots, chains, and whatever else that need welding or fastening. At the end of the day, we also rig down the machines, removing knives and doing basic maintenance work. It's worth noting here that there's no breaks through the day. The line workers get relieved by butchers so they can have their breaks. The only time the robots and conveyors stand still is during the six hours the cleaning crew has to clean them, outside of unscheduled breakdowns. Back in the summer of 2019, we got a new chief of the repair workshop. He's a good guy, but he is very new to many of the aspects of this field of work. You can't really compare it with anything else, because just like people there's no two pigs that are alike. Machines can't account for that, and we are already pushing them to the absolute limit of what they can handle. Each of our lines are designed for about 200 pigs per hour, we run at about 435 per hour. The new chief simply doesn't understand this, or at least it seems that way from time to time. We warn him of things, and he ignores it in favor of honestly stupid tasks that have no real impact on the overall procedures. Any true maintenance is done during weekends, because a single minute of standing still costs about $3,000 in salaries alone, so we have to do a lot of maintenance to keep things working. We also have a team we call, House Control, whose job it basically is to control and check aspects of the process for faults and dangers for us to fix, or for the butchers to change. We work hand in hand a lot of the times. They check everything from water vapor in the air, bacteria is a big no-no obviously, to grip on the handheld knives, to the sterilization of impact points. As in, sterilization of where the pigs touch the machines and knives. This is the important bit. Now for the malicious compliance. I have now worked here for four years, and I have a fairly good grasp of how everything works in the factory. I can smell the crap orders from higher up before they even land on my imaginary desk, and I have started anticipating them with an almost childlike glee. The other day, my leader called me up and explained that we needed to start doing checks on the machines twice a shift, to ensure that the sterilization water sprayers worked correctly, and to remove any residue and potential flesh. Cool. Cool cool. Remember how I mentioned what it costs to stop the line for a minute? Well that's exactly how long it takes to shut down the machines and start them back up again. See, if a machine can slice a pig in half in 4 seconds, it can do the exact same thing to you too. If I'm getting into one of them, you bet that the conveyors and machines are stopped dead and the emergency horn has been sounded. So, of course, twice per shift I shut down the machines and checked absolutely everything I could think of to check. Usually several minutes are spent doing it. Suffice to say that the line boss is a little bit angry with the procedure, but all I can possibly do is shrug my shoulders and tell him to take it up with my chief. It's not my fault that I weekly burn more money than I earn in a year, I'm just doing my job. Next one is titled, read my lease, you say? Anyway, this grudge has been simmering for almost a year now and has only just come to fruition. It began with my next door neighbor leaving me a passive aggressive note for having trash outside my door while I was cleaning my apartment. Two important points here. 1. I was deep cleaning because the landlord sent a note saying the adjoining apartment, my neighbors, had roaches. I needed to clean so the exterminator could see if my apartment was infested as well. 2. The trash was by my door for 30 minutes at most. I was trying to save a trip to the dumpster and doing a final sweep of the apartment before heading down. Now, prior to this incident, this neighbor had already upset me by constantly blaring their loud music to the point where my apartment walls vibrated. Fortunately for them, I prefer to avoid confrontation so I never called them out on it. After the passive-aggressive note calling me a pig though, all bets were off. She wrote that I should read my lease since I left my nasty trash everywhere. Okay which it's on. I read my lease like I was snorting coke off it. Every time they played their music loud, I filed a noise complaint. 
When I got a whiff of pot coming from their apartment, I filed another complaint. The lease says tenants must comply with the state's drug laws or risk eviction so, hey, another win for me. Finally, they brought a dog into the apartment despite the no pet policies exception only being for service animals. This was obviously not a service dog since it howled day and night betraying no semblance of training. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who complained after that final stunt since my landlord said the noisy dog problem was being taken care of through litigation and my next door neighbor's lease would not be renewed. Guess she should have read it. Next one is titled, I guess my new boss is messing with wrong single mother. I guess my new boss is messing with the wrong single mother. A little background, I just gave birth a few months ago. During my maternity leave, I was requested to join in a Zoom meeting, they said it's very important so I obliged. I love my company so much since it always had my back when I got pregnant, single mum, and got sick on my sixth month. Meeting was about me being transferred to a new boss due to realignment. This new boss then started calling me and asking me to do stuff which actually could wait until I get back from my maternity leave because of course the company knows I'm on leave. She always says there is a deadline for some online learning and stuff. She also asks me to attend some meetings, company annual online parties, which she said is mandatory to attend to, and most of my office mates will ask me why I'm attending since I'm on leave. Well I'm the kind of person who doesn't really complain much, if I can do it I just do it. Talking back or talking ill against somebody is a waste of my energy. Everything is remote anyways and my baby is sleeping almost all the time and camera is off so I can breastfeed. Now fast forward to this week, it's been 3 weeks since I'm officially back to work, still work at home, and I know bosses have different leadership styles but I'm afraid I can say she's kinda a pain in the butt. She demands things to be done as soon as possible when these are the ones which should really take a little time to get the best results. She will talk in the sweetest voice and tone but her message is basically telling you to ducking finish this now. Just imagine an evil character in a movie smiling at you but the eyes are scary while telling you that she's about to kill you. I then found out from my old boss that this one is full of pride and always wants to be the best. Never asks help from anyone and wants to impress the big boss all the time. Two days ago I messaged her sincerely apologizing that I have to file a leave the following day because my baby is set to do vaccines. I said I was sorry cause in my calendar it's a week from now and planning to file the leave this weekend but the doc's secretary just called and it has to be that next day. And in my country, I have the solo parent ID so leaves like these are really valid. She called me up and asked how many hours it should take. I said it's gonna be in the morning but I really want to file a leave cause most of the time babies get fever after and of course I want to take care of my baby. She said since we are just working from home, I don't need to file a leave and just adjust my working hours. I wanted to explain that I really want to take the entire day off and not work at all especially at night because I want to observe my baby but she literally ignored me and did not let me talk and just said her goodbyes and hung up. Imagine my surprise when around 9am the MF messaged me to join the conference call for our meeting. Cue malicious compliance. I said I'm on my way to the clinic and will just join once settled. I just ride the tuk-tuk to the health center so I can't join just yet because I'm holding my baby securely. So once I'm in the clinic, I graciously oblige to join the conference call while a lot of other babies are crying. Vaccination schedules are the same day so maybe half of the town's babies are there and they are all my accomplice. I press mute of course but when it's my turn to speak, I speak super close to the microphone while other babies were either shouting due to the injections, crying just because they're bored or maybe laughing at my boss right now. My own baby is just so quiet looking like the cutest MF latching on me. I can hear in my boss voice the regret of not allowing me this day off but she can't do anything about it now. I'm on the meeting answering all her questions and impressing everyone in my team like a boss. I can imagine their faces when they have to lower the volume when it's my turn to speak. I then sent her a message regarding the next vaccination schedule and that I want to ask permission to file for a leave that day. Well of course she said yes. Next one is titled, Cheapo Consignment Store. Many years ago, when our first son was a toddler, my wife was shopping in a consignment store for kids stuff. 
she happened to see a lady bringing in a bunch of stuff to sell to the store, and overheard the conversation. This woman had multiple bags of Thomas the Tank Engine toys and track, as well as one of the train tables. If it was new on the shelf, it would be several hundred dollars worth of stuff. The employee working there offered her a lowball offer, saying, $100 is the most I can offer. If you think you can get more, you are going to have to find a buyer yourself. My son was a huge Thomas the Tank Engine fan, and my wife's eyes lit up. My bargain hunting wife immediately went over and said, I think you just found a buyer. Will you take $200 for all of it? The employee got mad and said they weren't allowed to conduct business inside the store. So my wife helped her carry it out to the parking lot, and gave her $200 for a ridiculous number of Thomas the Tank Engine toys that my son, and eventually his younger three siblings played with for years. Next one is titled, Expensive Grocery Shopping. After college I moved back home with my parents to save some money and because there was a global pandemic raging. I offered to help out as much as I could including grocery shopping. My parents usually got their groceries delivered so my mum offered to knock $10, the normal delivery fee, off my rent every time I shopped. I told her it wasn't necessary but being a broke 20-something I didn't argue. Fast forward a few months. I'm eating lunch and my mum says, you're going shopping today. I explained I was busy but I'll put it on the list for the next day. She started trying to guilt me to make me go. I let her know I did the shopping as a favor and if she really needed something she could order like she used to. She was not having it. Well then don't take so much money off your rent if you don't shop, she said. That was when I decided to get petty. I'm very thankful to my parents for letting me move back home so I never was late with my rent and if I wasn't sure how much money to take off my rent I always just paid more. So since then I've been meticulously saving every receipt so I know exactly how much to take off my rent. I've been paying much less in recent months. Edit to clear some things up, my parents pay for the groceries. I think it's totally reasonable for them to charge me a low rent, it's completely affordable for me. And my parents are great parents. This is more funny petty than anything else. Next one is titled, You were hired to work weekends but now don't want to, okay doki. I posted this as a comment and a few people requested that it be posted here. When I discussed this with a couple of co-worker I realized I had misremembered a few details, mostly dates and times so there is some change, I blame COVID screwing my sense of time up. A couple years ago, I was working as a manager in an electronics store. The management team consisted of four people but due to rapid change, I went from the newbie to the main manager in about four months. We were looking to hire to cover Friday to Sunday as some of our staff had started attending university and were looking to have the weekends off for downtime. The hiring process began and honestly, it was a mess. Candidate after candidate would fall apart in the interview, show no interest in the position, attempt to change the dates from the weekend to another day even though the advert specified weekends. My favorite, a guy who screamed at me when I told him the pay and demanded triple or the interview was over. We pay over the minimum wage and what he was demanding would put him close to a trained professional in most situations. I had given up, I began to contemplate the ethics of cloning my existing staff rather than hire anyone else. Then he arrived. We shall call him Moist, as I dislike the word and I dislike him. Moist was perfect. Great conversationalist, knew about our products and had a serious interest in the company. I was delighted. After review he was offered the position. His first day went brilliantly, he listened to instruction well and completed tasks in perfect order. I had time off booked for the next day and was confident in my team's ability to train him. Now I know the whole, we're like a family, is frowned on when discussing jobs but our team was fantastic, really close group who all enjoyed the same things, please read this as big old nerds. So team synergy was really important to us all. My day off and I start getting messages from damn near everyone about what this guy is doing, I can't remember everything but here's a few highlights. One of our female members of staff said he was ignoring work to talk her and wouldn't stop even after she requested it, I asked if she wanted to take this further and I would support it if she did but she didn't feel it warranted that but wanted me to know. One of our long timers said he was smoking weed behind the shop on his break and was blazed for his whole shift and laughed at him when he brought it up and called him a narc. 
finally one of our staff members who handles a very specific role in the job and it's bloody brilliant at it, who openly admits that he is autistic and as such likes his work area to be just how he likes it, states that he came over to his area, messed it up looking for something and then when called on it, said, isn't it your job to keep this area clean, and walked away. He also used someone's personal cup for a cup of tea, smashed it by accident and just kicked the shards under a desk, CCTV caught him in that one a couple weeks later. The staff member was distraught as the cup was a gift. Within 24 hours I was convinced that this guy was getting fired. I had everything I needed and then some. The other manager didn't feel comfortable firing him so I said I would do it. There's a lot of paperwork to fill out for firing someone so the Sunday I sat and began completing it. Due to the shift schedule, he finished roughly one hour after I started so I knew I wouldn't have it completed by the end of his shift and if he kicked up fuss with HR and I didn't have everything completed then my butt was getting kicked, so I knew he would be getting fired at the start of his shift on Friday coming. Just before he leaves he comes into my office and the conversation went something like this. Moist, hey mate, I need to change my shift patterns to work Monday to Wednesday. Me, you were hired to work weekends. Moist, yeah but you could give me X's days and she can do mine. Me, no, she asked for those days, which is why we hired you. Moist, well I want my weekends and it's my right to work the days I want and it is your job to accommodate that. He stands up. Moist, I will be here next Monday for my shift, I won't be here at the weekend and walks out. Now as I said I was new so I was completely dumbstruck at this entitlement. After calming down I realized, he wanted his weekends off. So he's going to get them. I completed the paperwork faster than a bullet train and sat back and waited. The weekend rolled around and, true to his word, he didn't show. I messaged him to let him know he was considered absent and he didn't reply. Fine. Then Monday rolled around. Everyone in the store knew. I hadn't told anyone anything but they knew. There was an air of satisfaction around the team that day. He strolled in, started getting signed in and I stopped him. Me, you have failed your probation and no longer work here, here are the forms. I hope you enjoy your weekends. His face fell. He started looking confused then angry. He kicked off, telling me that HR would hear about this and he was going to the papers. Luckily the paperwork was immaculate and I had made sure that everyone who had told me issues about him had made a formal complaint and it was all logged accordingly. Nothing came of it. I bought everyone donuts that day to apologize for the hell I had brought upon the store. Next one is titled, what do you do when your equipment's batteries die? You change them, of course. So today I had a theoretical test for my photography course. Nothing too hard, just a bunch of what would you do in this hypothetical situation, but the answers were long as you had to explain your reasoning and I was honestly getting tired of writing in ink. Q malicious compliance. At about the end of the test, there was a question about how to handle a situation in which your external flash runs out of battery and naming two possibilities of a solution. I read the question several times to make sure before boldly writing, the obvious solution would be to change the batteries and then proceeded to give the other solution. My teacher, who's actually very nice and fun, graded the tests while we were doing the practical test. Then she suddenly chuckles and goes, Op, I can't believe you actually wrote that, to which I answered, well, you never said I hypothetically didn't have extra batteries. She looked at me for a long time. Then ticked the answer as correct. Next one is titled, A Hairy Malicious Compliance with a Wholesome Ending. My partner and I were planning a visit, we have both been comparing our body hair progress in lockdown via video and, well I think our chat is self-explanatory. Me, if you wanna keep growing your beard you do you, it's fun. Do you want me to shave my legs? Them, no, you do whatever you want to do to make you feel good. Me, do you like them now? I will keep them hairy if you like them. Them, is it strange to say I like both? I hate making decisions for myself. So, malicious compliance, I prepare for their visit, and shave just, one, leg. My legs were very hairy, let me make this clear. My pale legs look like lint rollers used on my cat. It looks absolutely ridiculous, but I'm now committed to the compliance. They come over and I sit next to them on the sofa, I've worn shorts in the winter especially for the occasion, and plonk my legs on their lap. 
They don't immediately notice and are stroking the leg that was closer to them and said, I like this leg, and I flipped the other leg on top and announced, but do you like this leg too? They look so shocked but then bust out laughing saying, I can't believe you did that. It turns out they did like it though anyway so my malicious intent didn't land but I thought Yarl might appreciate a happy ending for once. Last one is titled, Can't Deposit Change Unless It's a Full Coin Roll? Okay. So, this happened a few months ago when banks started the whole, we no longer accept change deposits thing. Well I had just come across an old piggy back during some spring cleaning and wanted to deposit the coins I found in my bank account. Seemed like a pretty standard thing, to want to put money in the bank. I knew I would have to count them myself and put them in coin sleeves but what I didn't know until I spoke with the teller is that not only will they only accept coin rolls, they will only accept full coin rolls. At this point I was furious. Not only will my bank not accept my money but now they won't accept it even if it's fully sorted and counted for them. It was at this point that I had an idea that I'm still kinda proud of to this day. I asked and found out that while I can't deposit coins unless the roll is full, I can withdraw any amount of change I want. So after counting up all my change I went back to the counter and asked for 73 pennies, 11 nickels, 19 dimes, and 7 quarters and watched as the smug look fell off the teller's face when he realized he'd have to count my coins after all and this time there wasn't any stupid policy to get him out of it. Thanks for listening.